Hey yo everyone, welcome to the Sunny Go One Piece podcast. On this episode, we're going to be talking about anime episodes 92 through 94, which will be covering manga chapters 155 through 158. And here, the Straw Hats finally make their way to Alabasta to help Vivi save her country from the nefarious plans of Crocodile and the Baroque works. So the synopsis, the Straw Hats now make their way to Alabasta, but not before they run into Mr. Two Bonclay and discover he has a very troublesome devil fruit ability, but unknowingly, they make friends with him. And once in Alabasta, the crew gathers supplies while Luffy runs into Smoker and the Marines who have chased him all the way from Logtown, but they also run into none other than Luffy's own brother, Ace. So the differences, there are quite a few differences in these episodes as it's chock full of full filler episodes type stuff. But first of all, one difference that may or may not stick out to you is the original white beard Jolly Roger symbol that's found on Ace's back. In the anime and also later on in the manga as well, it is a white beard skull with the vertical crossbones. However, earlier on in the manga, it was a variation of what is known to us in the west as the swastika instead of a a crossbones behind it and you can see why they decided to change this however this isn't the same swastika used to represent the nazi regime it's actually a asian slash japanese character called the manji and in east asian cultures it carries many different meanings but it's if boiled down to its basic meaning from what i found is that it means all or everything Obviously, though, because of the extremely evil connotations and meaning most associated with this symbol, it's been changed in the anime, and eventually Oda was told to change it in the manga as well by Shueisha. So going forward, the vertical crossbones with the white beard skull is the official Jolly Roger of the white beard pirate crew. But earlier on, if you do look at the manga, it's still seen as this um, kanji character. Now in these episodes, there are also two additional sequences that are filler added to these episodes. In the first one is when Luffy runs off by himself to go find food. We see him getting lost and finding a man in a little hut in the desert that has a substance called dance powder. And so this scene was added in, I'm assuming to pad out time. And we also get another scene where we see Chopper and Sanji shopping for the supplies. And then this whole adventure of Chopper getting stuck in this little cart and getting taken to the rebel base as well. And so none of these sequences are actually apparent in the manga and these are all filler. I'll go into a little bit more detail, but I'm not really gonna talk about the filler sections all that much throughout this episode. So let's get into my thoughts on these episodes. So these are going to be heavily intercut with canon material from the manga as well as filler material from the anime. More specifically, less so in episode 92, but very much in 93 and 94. To start off the episode, we get our first full reveal of this arc's big bad, Crocodile. He's pretending to be a hero of Alabasta as he takes out some small fry pirates with his ability, which has been alluded to a few times in the past, but he has some ability to control sand. And on a desert island, it'll be interesting to see how the Straw Hats match up against a villain like this because he pretty much has full control over the elements. And we see that he is another Devil Fruit user similar to Smoker. He has some form of an elemental type double fruit that gives him invulnerability from physical attacks as the swords just go straight through him. So pretty imposing and rightfully he is a member of the Shibukai being this powerful so far. And it is interesting to see like how strong Crocodile is, especially considering we know that Smoker is so insanely strong and he just beats up on Luffy. So you wonder like how is Luffy ever going to beat Crocodile? We catch up with the Straw Hats now making their way to Alabasta and on their way run into Mr. Two by accident while traveling traveling through some steam. Well, more like they fished him off his own ship. (laughs) This interaction is really fun and interesting. Mr. Two seems like somewhat of a decent person for a villain, which is a bit surprising considering we saw him in the previous episode acting more like a villain traditionally, beating up on his subordinates. But here he's really fun, likable, and actually really polite. 
I almost feel like Oda began Mr. Two in a more sinister direction, but then immediately lightened him up because he saw the potential of how fun it could be for him to interact with the Straw Hats. And while waiting for his crew to come back and get him, Mr. Two shows a display of his devil fruit ability, which is the Mane Mane no Mi, or the Copy Copy Fruit, which allows him to take the form of anyone he touches with his right hand. And he slaps Luffy to get his copy and eventually gets everyone as- aside from Sanji, who's down in the kitchen. There is one thing that always kind of confused me. I can never tell if he actually gets Vivi's copy because you see him touching Vivi up top because he stretches his hand up to the upper deck. But then when he plays around with his ability, you don't see her come up in the montage of all of his copies. So I don't know if he actually got Vivi's copy here. Of course, this now introduces a huge problem for the Straw Hats, which they later come to realize as well. And Mr. Two and Baroque Works now have the ability to copy and infiltrate the Straw Hats if they so choose to. And Vivi also learns that Mr. Two has a copy of her father's face, the King of Alabasta, Cobra. But for now, Luffy, Usopp, and Chopper are having fun and getting along really well with Mr. Two. But all good things have to come to an end, and his crew have come to pick him up. But as they leave, they come to realize that that, in fact, was Mr. Two. And there's this funny bit where Vivi is shocked that it was Mr. Two, and goes on to mention she's never met the Mr. Two and Mr. One pair, but has had heard rumors of what he's like. Then she proceeds to describe him in incredible detail, with the rest of the crew saying, You should have realized it. <laughs> it's like, Kizuke. <laughs> I always found that pretty funny. But for now, with this new information, they decide to wrap cloths around their left arm to distinguish themselves from the copies. This is a pretty significant moment, but I feel like the manga does a better job of highlighting the significance as this is the start of their adventure in Alabasta. And in the manga, it's shown as this huge two-page spread. But in the anime, they do try and give it significance with that big dong and that like camera movement but it just doesn't quite feel the same level in terms of epicness and I feel like that's where the manga may sometimes be superior in terms of the anime because of the fact that with these huge panels you can really emphasize just how important and momentous these moments are. Now once in Alabasta there are many things added to the anime to increase most of the runtime but it isn't bad but just kind of wastes time and is pretty unnecessary. As mentioned above, Luffy's little side story with the man with the dance powder, Sanji and Chopper shopping adventure are both filler. Dance powder is a very important story element to this arc, but it gets explained in a more organic way later, so this just seems really redundant. And similarly with the camel that Chopper meets, he does play a bigger role later on in the story, but again, he's introduced properly later on. And we also meet the rebellion group leader here. Again, this is also much earlier than we do in the manga, but again, I'll discuss all of these elements when they're properly introduced. After the Straw Hats get their supplies and change into the local clothes, which by the way, I love the look of everybody here in this Alabasta costumes. Like, well, and obviously I love Nami's get up here and she looks amazing not just because you know it's a very revealing outfit but just i think it looks really good especially in the manga with the colorized and everything or not a manga the anime and yeah they all look really cool i think in the in sort of the the desert get up anyways we pick back up with ace in the restaurant suffering from insomnia while dining And this scene just cracks me up every time. It's just pure absurd and silly comedy, but the ridiculousness of the scenario is what makes it so funny. As we learned in Little Garden, Smoker and Tashigi were waiting for the Straw Hats, and here they are, with Smoker now being played by Oba Mahito, filling in after the passing of Ginzo Matsuo. Like mentioned before, I like them both, but I personally like Oba's Smoker way more with that gruff voice he has and his intensity makes Smoker feel more badass to me. Another fun fact is that Oba Mahito is actually the voice of the narrator up until now. Anyways, Smoker finds Ace in the restaurant coincidentally and decides that he needs to be arrested as we learn that Ace is the second division commander of the famed Whitebeard Pirates. Currently, we don't have too much information on this pirate crew, But based on the way the characters and the background people talk about them, they are a big deal, as we will come to see much, much later in the story. 
But in another bombshell discovery is that Ace is looking for Luffy because he's his younger brother. This is a rather unexpected and interesting revelation. I think to this point, I never expected Luffy to have a brother. You know, I always just thought he was an only child and it never even crossed my mind that Luffy would have a brother. And this whole sequence is too funny though. As just as Smoker and Ace are about to go at it, Luffy comes barreling through the door, tackling Smoker and Ace through the wall of the restaurant. It's interesting that Luffy is able to actually hit Smoker here in this one instance since his Moku Moku fruit makes it so that Luffy usually can't hit him. And there has been a lot of debate over the years in the community as to how these elemental type devil fruits work. In order for the invulnerability to work, do they have to consciously activate it? But then there have been instances where these types of fruit users are caught off guard and still have attacks pass through them. If, if you're asking me, in my personal opinion, these fruits are pretty much on all the time. And this one time, I believe Oda bent his rules to allow for this comedic moment to happen, which I'm okay with, you know. Sometimes you just gotta bend the rules to make the story flow better or to create tension or comedy or whatnot, as long as they're not bent to the most absurd, you know, realms, I'm okay with this. <laughs> and I always get a laugh out of the next scene too, where Smoker is staring down Luffy while, while he just wharfs down like a bunch of food, absent of any sound other than Luffy eating and chewing. And then after an uncomfortable amount of time, <laughs> Smoker finally yells out, stop eating or kuu no yamero. It's so funny. I These moments are just, I don't know what it is, but these moments are kind of like lacking, I feel like, in the more later on in the story. Like earlier on in One Piece, like I love these comedic moments like this. And I, I do miss them, to be honest. Like just having these random, just absurd jokes just show up out of nowhere. And then finally Luffy realized it's Smoker from Logtown who kicked his ass before. And he decides to run, but not before stuffing a buffet's worth of food all in his mouth and then takes off. And I love how he still has time to bow and say, Gochisousama, or thank you for the food. And, <laughs> and then he proceeds to run with, like, I don't know how much food in his mouth, with his cheeks, like, going out, like, two feet on either side. And then Smoker gives chase, but just as he's about to catch Luffy, Ace shows up again and blasts fire to stop the smoke. And in another awesome reveal, Ace is shown to be a devil fruit user, and he's got an elemental type fruit, like Smoker, but he's got the power of fire. And Ace is a powerhouse. I mean, if he can go up against Smoker, a guy that Luffy did not stand a chance against, but be able to actually take on Smoker, Ace is definitely a strong character, and it'll be interesting to see what happens with Ace and where he fits into the story because when you think about it if ace is this strong how strong is whitebeard himself because ace is their second division commander that means there's still a first division commander and then the captain whitebeard so lots more questions and intrigue are surrounding all of these reveals and i just love how the world of one piece unfolds like this and expands slowly little by little just it just makes the series so fun to watch because you get the sense that there's other crap happening in the world and you just want to learn about it. But also you get to sort of let your imagination run wild to see like what else is going on and what other things and what other threats are out there. One last thing I wanted to mention is the little things Oda is doing to grow VB's relationship with the Straw Hats throughout these episodes and the rest of this arc. Like her joyfully smiling at her armband after Luffy declaring that the armband signifies that they're all nakamas. And again later when Vivi tries to dissuade the crew from helping her any further as the deal was just to get her safely to Alabasta and not to fight for her. But they all come up with reasons to stay and help even though they're selfish reasons quote unquote. They all mention them to not make Vivi feel bad because deep down they want to stay and help regardless of what the reasons are. Even though I think Nami's is a 50-50, she actually does want the money too. But obviously, Nami, seeing Vivi, she does truly want to help her. And these moments help to build up to some pretty incredible payoffs throughout the rest of the story. And I can't wait to talk about those moments. And obviously, I'm not going to mention them here. But yeah, I love how he starts to plant these seeds. 
of VB's sort of growing and deepening relationship with the Straw Hat members. And it's really cool. And trust me, it pays off so well. So many different ways, too. Anyways, we are finally here. The Alabasta arc. You know, the culmination of this saga is upon us. And it starts with a bang with many new reveals, both big and small. We do have to deal with a bit more filler material, but this arc is pretty epic, and I can't wait to get into more of the next several episodes. But yeah, until then, if you enjoyed this, send me a like or a comment, and if you want to join me on this adventure of rewatching One Piece, please consider subscribing. You can check out my Instagram or Twitter account at SunnyGoPodcast for updates. And as always, I wanted to thank you for taking the time to listen to my podcast. And stay tuned for the spoiler section if you are interested, because I've got a few things I wanted to mention. Um, I won't go into too much detail about them, but there are some things I wanted to talk about. But if not, I hope to see you on the next episode. Bye. So, spoiler sections. I think one thing I wanted to mention was the Mane Mane no Mi, and we get a little bit more lore surrounding it in the Wano arc. And so during the Oden flashback, it's shown that the Mane Mane no Mi had a previous user, the uh, Kurozumi Higurashi, which is a relative of Orochi. And so she used it to help Orochi get power in Wano. And so it's interesting too because it was used during the final fight between Oden and the Scabbards versus Kaido. And in order to get the upper hand, she uses it to transform into Momonosuke to distract Oden, thereby allowing Kaido to get a finishing blow on Oden. But then Kaido, seeing this as a disrespectful act, actually ends up killing Kurozumi Higurashi. And so sometime down the line, I guess like 20 or so years later, we know that Devil Fruits, they, they tend to pop back up after their users pass away. And it gets into the hands of Boneclay, who now possesses the fruit. But yeah, that's why I find that very interesting. I also wonder, we see him take the form of Chopper. And it's like, can the Mane Mane no Mi actually copy animals? I, and to what extent also? Because for the most part, we've only seen him use it on humans. But Chopper is very special in that he's a human, but he's also a reindeer. And it's funny that Bonclay actually transformed into the hybrid form and not the human form of Chopper. So can he not transform into Chopper's human form if he hasn't seen it? And these are kind of questions that I've always rolled around in my head, but I don't know if we'll ever find the answers to that. And then the next thing I kind of wanted to talk about was the armband scene and its significance. I don't know, this is just more me just kind of fanboying around that scene because of how significant it is later on, especially when it's, you know, time for the defeat of Crocodile and you see BB reminiscing over the past events. And I love that moment where you see Luffy saying, you know, so I just got to beat up Crocodile. And you see that little flashback to this moment where Luffy quotes that line. And then, of course, the finale of Alabasta, where they reveal the mark on their left arm to be the signifier that they are all Nakama. And yeah, just the significance of this scene is where they come up with the cross on their arms as well as the armband. And you see that cross. And yeah, you know, it's like one of the most iconic moments in the series. And this is the lead up to it. And I just like, and like I mentioned, like, I wish the anime could have given this moment. I don't know. I don't know what you would do to make it better. But it's just like in the manga, it's just so much more important because of how big of a page spread it takes up. You just see the fact that it's like all the members around that barrel, kind of like how they did it just before the Grand Line. And you see them sticking out their arms in a circle. And it's just a really cool moment. And I just wish it was given a little bit more of like an epicness in the anime because of how big of a moment it is. But yeah, I mean, it's still great. You know, it's not going to take away from it. And then finally, the Ace's politeness and his well-mannered nature. We see him, you know, talk in a very polite manner. 
He's apologizing to the people who just burst through their houses, you know, during their dinner. And it's a stark contrast to Luffy's sort of his ab- abrasive, you know, very casual form of speech. And it makes you wonder, like, why were they raised so differently? And obviously, we know now that because they're not actually related, you know, Ace is Roger's son, while Luffy is Dragon's son. But they were both primarily raised by Garp and Dadan. But it's funny how when Makino was teaching, you know, that one special scene, and it always makes me cry, of Makino reminiscing after Ace's death, the, I guess, manner training that she puts them through, and Luffy just completely not paying attention and not doing it, while Ace is actually very polite. And you see that already starting here with Ace's, like, polite speech and his well-mannered nature. And it's funny to see how that gets reflected years later on in the story in Ace and Sabo and Luffy's flashback. Also, I really wish... I can't wait to get to Skypiea so that I can start using the terms Logia and Paramecia. And <laughs> because in the non-spoiler section, I have to keep referring them to elemental devil fruits. And I just really wish I could just say Logia because it's much easier. But if I say that, no one's going to know what the hell I'm talking about. And I don't want to spoil the fact that there are terms for Logia and Paramecia fruits. Currently, we still only have Zone. But until Wiper and I think Rocky... Um, says both Logia and Paramecia. We don't actually know what those terms are. So I just have to keep calling them elementals, but it's kind of annoying. But anyways, that's it. And I will see you on the next episode. Bye.